everyone, welcome to Abstract Boss. Today I am going to be talking to you about how to use the ClearCast 7050. Stay tuned. This is from the epoxyresinstore.com. So I do have a discount in the description below. You can use Abstract 20. And they also have other fantastic resins, uh, specifically the Liquid Diamonds was my favorite. So uh, make sure you check those out. And then I'm using the Patty's Pigments, Crystal Violet, the Pumpkin Orange, Wisteria, Aquamarine, and the Sparkle Mauve. So those are the colors that I'm using. And then I'm gonna do a lot of different casting projects today. This was a mold issue gone wrong. Um, the mold itself was fantastic, but I tried to use it with the UV resin and that was a big no-no. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to put the resin on top of this to help peel out all this extra stuff because um, it comes out and it's just, it's been a pain to try to clean out. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast over top of that and I think that'll look cool. Um, and then these, I made myself, these two, um, and so I was testing out mold making and I made this pretty piece from here and I'll be posting that on my Etsy shop and this pretty piece, look how cool, like that looks like an actual rock. So made that one from this one. And so make sure you guys check those out on my Etsy shop. So I'll recast those with different colors. And this, this, and this I got from Lee Cranch Creations and I, freaking love them. Um, the six point mold I haven't tried yet, so that's what I'm doing today. These ones I made these beautiful necklaces with, and these are all on my Etsy shop as well. So you can do it with just a little bit of glitter and a mix of colors. You can do a solid color with some silver leafing. I can also do the silver leafing on the side. Um, this is a mix of colors with the copper leafing and that's right on top and so there are so many options and I do allow them to be personalized and these are only $15 right now so make sure you guys snatch that up and let's get to it with the ClearCast 7050. I, I will put all the molds on um, at least the ones that I got from Amazon. I'll put those on my Amazon account below as well and that just kind of has an easy access for you to be able to go and um, use those and get them in your cart super easy. So uh, this one is a two to one ratio by weight or volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and do weight. You wanna put your mixing cup on there first and then you're gonna reset it to zero. So that way the weight of this doesn't alter weighing your resin. Now my thing is I'm gonna go ahead and do the larger one first. Ooh, it is a little cold. So actually I'm gonna go give this a hot bath and I'll be right back. So this is what I mean by a hot bath. This is super slow running resin um, because my garage is really cold right now. And so I have it sitting in hot water for, well actually I'm just gonna go grab my kiddo from the bus and when I come back, this should be good. Um, and then that way it's a lot easier to mix and it helps reduce with the bubbles as well. I'm gonna do my largest one first. And I do need a decent amount for these. Now, if you look, I also have the measurements on the side, so I could go by that as well. All right, so there's seven, and half of seven is going to be an additional 3.5. So we are looking to bring our total to 10.5 ounces. And I always do the more liquid one second because it's easier to pour and control. Okay, when you're done, go ahead and turn that off and start mixing. Now I have worked with this before. The very interesting that kind of uh, threw me off because you know I'm used to working with normal art coats or normal resins and not casting resins. So with this one, it says to mix it and to actually let it sit so that way the bubbles can um, kind of float to the top and pop on their own. So that part kind of scared me and I didn't want to do that because I felt like if I did that, it would start the curing process because that's what the other ones do. 
Um, so it does not do that. And so don't pull an AB on that one. Um, don't be afraid to let this sit and get all them bubbles out. Okay, so you can see that there are, I don't know, I guess a normal amount of bubbles in here. Um, I'd say maybe a little less, definitely a lot less than the art resin. The art resin bubbles up a lot for me um, with my mixing. I guess I get too impatient and I go a little too fast, but that's my fault. And so I do think that the bubbles are very minimal and I do appreciate that a lot. Okay, so it's only been about one, maybe two minutes. So most of those larger bubbles have already been out and you can see that, but I'm gonna go ahead and divide out into my little cups. I put a little bit of resin in each cup and I always leave a little bit in the actual mixing cup so that way in case I need it, I can go back to it. So the reason I didn't let it sit fully is because I have to mix pigments in anyways and that's just gonna agitate the resin and create more bubbles. And so now that I have the colors mixed, now I can let, if you can notice actually, some of the bubbles are already popping, which I think is fantastic. I noticed when I tried to cast um, a couple of my jewelry pieces with my art resin, um, there were a lot of bubbles in it. And so in this, I thought it was super cool because with this, I mean, it makes it look like a rock. It gives it a really cool texture. But when it comes to other pieces, you might not want that. Okay, so now it's just a matter of pouring. I'm gonna get a little bit into each one of those tips because you do have to bring something pointy down into those to make sure that the resin gets all the way down in there. So you wanna be very careful. You don't wanna stab a hole into the mold. You just wanna make sure that you're pushing the resin down into the point that's there. Now the other trick that I use whenever you see bubbles is alcohol ink. So putting alcohol ink in these will actually help pop some of the bubbles. And so I am gonna use the Pinata Metallic. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna go with the, go with the copper. Okay, and then once you put that in there, you can see that it's spreading, but what I like to do is I like to take that toothpick and I just like to give it a quick mix around. And it works amazing for me. All right, so I'm gonna clean these up and then I'm gonna go ahead and unmold these in this video so you'll get to see the results. Okay, so here are the unmolding of everything. Um, I did add some embossing to some of them to give them a shine. And I tried the rose gold embossing 
and hated it. Look at that. That is not rose gold. Um, that one was from Ranger Inks. I mean, I guess it would be an interesting tan, but not a rose gold. Um, so I wanted to specifically show you a comparison of these two because this one was the Art Resin. This one was the Clear Cast 7050. And I also have the original. I had to grab that from my drawer. So the original, you can see that the original has all these holes in the side. So all the holes that I see are a result of the actual mold and the way that it's supposed to look. Um, on the back side, this is because it's not rounded like this one is. And this, you notice, has a bunch of extra holes that were not a part of the original. So <clears throat> with that being said, this one was the art resin. I do think it gave it a really cool rock-like texture. So with this one, I guess I probably could have sanded like just those edges right there to make it look a little bit more rounded. Um, and that would have been just fine. I was actually kind of hoping this looked really cool with the rose gold on it, but yeah, I did not. Um, but look at the front. The front looks super cool. I think the darker color allowed for the shine to come through a little bit more. This has a beautiful sparkle. Um, and I just don't think that either one of these really captured the original the same. The mold that I made, this one's the Art Resin, and this one was the clear cast. So you can see the big difference on this. This one has so many micro bubbles, um, and this one has absolutely none. So huge difference there um, in casting this particular piece. And the other ones, I think they're beautiful. I think this is one of my favorite molds because I think they're so shiny, and there's no bubbles. They're both well, three, all three flat. Um, all three look fantastic. I did the embossing on them. And this one I didn't do anything because I just thought the print on this one looked super cool. So I have not added these to my Etsy store just yet. Um, but if you're interested in them, they will be $15. Um, so message me. And now I'm going to show you guys the bigger piece that I did. Now, ClearCast 7050 is not actually meant to be a thick casting resin. It is a very, very thick resin. So that means you should not be doing super thick casts. You want, if you're doing like river tables and stuff like that, then you want a very thin resin. So let me grab the thick piece and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here's my thick piece. Um, this whole chunk right here where the stairs are, that is the thick piece. Look at all the bubbles, okay? So unless you're using a vacuum pot or a pressure pot, you're not gonna wanna do a thick cast with this particular piece. If you notice in this area where it's thin, there are absolutely no bubbles, but, um, and this is the back, so no bubbles. But this area where it's super thick, the bubbles didn't come up. When you are utilizing the clear cast 7050, you're gonna to wanna to stick with jewelry casting, thinner casts. Um, you can do thick casts if you're doing them in layers. So if you're patient enough to do layers, then that is how you're gonna go ahead and get the thicker casting. And that will work that way. I didn't bother with sanding or anything like that with this one just because it had so many bubbles. Uh, so I didn't really care to do anything with that one. Now, the very last one that I had was Le Cranch Creations Six Point Mold. So the coloring, I just didn't really enjoy the colors that I used. If you guys like the colors, cool. But um, I did not enjoy the colors this time. So with this one, I'm not a huge fan of the coloring. The mold itself is pretty cool. It'll hold, you know, business cards if you want to put some business cards in here. Um, if you want this to be an accent piece in something else or on a specific geode, I thought that would be really cool. Um, I had a real difficult time removing this one from the mold. Something that I found that helped a lot was Dawn dish soap and water and then getting that in the crevices and it came up much easier. I did end up having to use a wooden stick because it's upside down like this and I had to use a wooden stick to push it up. Now you can see with this one too, it's a thick one on the bottom. All the bubbles came to the top there. Um, so there's no bubbles in this piece, any of these, which is awesome. But at the top, I didn't blow torch it and that was my fault. 
So this one actually would not have had any bubbles at all. So with that being said though, you want to make sure that you're using something that's not going to stab into this. Make sure it's super, super hard before you try to take it out. If you are taking it out before the end of its cure time, you are wrong. <laughs> Um, you really definitely want to make sure that you're waiting until it is extremely hard and then wait even longer and then just sort of peel back the mold. So it's going to look like this. You're just going to peel it back just a little and get some water done in those different areas. And you're just going to peel it back everywhere you can and get the water done in there. And that is how you're going to head, going to go ahead and get this out of the mold. It does take a lot of wiggling um, and then squishing the mold and that's how you're gonna get it out. I do think it's really cool. I like it. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this one yet because I find more uses for the smaller ones. I did do a geode with one of her other ones and I added some glitters and some different stuff going on here. It's a really busy one, um, but I think it's really pretty. But this is one of her other molds that I did this one from. And this one was the easiest one to get out out of all the big molds. So definitely have different possibilities and inspiration. And last but not least, I wanted to talk to you guys about the mountain pieces. I did the two mountain pours and then I put them in a big one, um, the big rectangle and poured that. Now two things happened. I accidentally got some glitter in it. So that's what those bubbles you see, bubbles, <laughs> it's actually the glitter. So they're not really bubbles. These bubbles right here at the top, I didn't blow towards this one either. That's what happened with the mold and um, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened with the six point mold and this one, I didn't blow torch it. And so this one, all the bubbles didn't come out. If you can see there though, you can see that they're right on the top. You can see the glitter underneath, but you can see that that's right on the top. See, so look at that. Now, these particular pieces are used for um, you can cut them and use them for pen blanks, um, or you can even cut them, sand them, polish them, and you could use them for jewelry pieces. I'm not quite sure how to do all that yet. I just wanted to cast it and see what it would look like without all that extra stuff. And I mean, it's pretty cool. I guess it's a cool paperweight <laughs> until I can figure that out. But um, I do have that one just setting aside because of that. And then I didn't sand the edges again because this whole thing would be a part of a different project so i just didn't mess with this one so overall i really enjoyed the clear cast all right everyone that's it for today if you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a comment below and like and subscribe i'll see you next time